In an Instagram live stream, AOC talked about the siege on the U.S. Capitol that took place on January 6th. And basically, she talks about how she thought she was going to die. And it's it's horrifying to hear this story because you know that QAnon conspiracy theorists, Trump supporters, uh, white supremacists, they were targeting AOC. We know that their goal was to stage this coup and um, stop Biden from taking power and becoming president. But I mean, AOC has been a target of Donald Trump for a really long time. So, you know, when you have the president constantly like egging on, agitating against specific members of Congress, AOC, Ilhan Omar, you have to imagine that when his lunatic supporters storm the Capitol, there's going to be certain members of Congress that are going to be particularly susceptible to victimization. And AOC talks about how there was a moment where she genuinely believed she was going to die. Listen to her as she shares this story. I had a pretty traumatizing event happen to me. Um, and I do not know if I can even disclose the full details of that event due to security concerns. But I can tell you that I had a very close encounter where I thought I was going to die. Um, and you have all of those thoughts um, where, you know, at the end of your life and all of these thoughts come rushing to you. And um, that's what happened to a lot of us on Wednesday. Um, and I thought I, I, I did not think, I did not know if I was going to make it to the end of that day alive. Wednesday was an extremely traumatizing event. Um, and it is not an exaggeration to say that many, many members of the house were nearly assassinated. Um, it's just not an exaggeration to say that at all. Uh, we were very lucky um, that things happened within certain minutes that allowed members to escape the cap the the house floor unharmed because there were QAnon and white supremacist sympathizers and frankly white supremacist members of Congress um, in that extraction point who I know and who I had felt would disclose my location. That is uh, horrifying, horrifying to think about. And, you know, these white supremacists, they they want to kill AOC. They want to kill Ilhan Omar. They want to harm the very people who Trump has been demonizing. Trump is claiming that, you know, it's the squad. They're part of the issues. AOC plus three. So, of course, you know, these members of Congress, had they come into, you know, the paths of one of these extremists storming the Capitol trying to stage a coup, of course, they would be vulnerable. Uh, they would be put in harm's way. And so it's terrifying. And to that last point that she made where she talks about how some of her own GOP colleagues possibly would be putting their lives in danger by giving out their locations, she's not wrong about that because there actually is evidence that newly elected QAnon conspiracy theorist Laura Boebert did in fact give away the locations of politicians such as Nancy Pelosi during the siege. In fact, she tweeted out, we were locked in the House chambers, and then she tweeted out, the Speaker has been removed from the chambers. And that was after she tweeted, today is 1776. So ask yourself this question, why is Laura Boebert tweeting about the location of the Speaker of the House, someone who would very obviously be a target for these extremists who are trying to stage a coup. Why would she just randomly tweet about Nancy Pelosi and where she is? After tweeting 1776, ask yourself that. It's almost as if she was coordinating with these terrorists in real time. So somebody should look into this. Somebody needs to determine whether or not Laura Boebert was acting as a co-conspirator and helping to organize this coup by letting them know where to look for individuals like Nancy Pelosi. So when AOC says that my GOP colleagues, QAnon conspiracy theorists, you know, white supremacists, might give away our location, she wasn't wrong. Because in real time, Laura Boebert was doing just that. It's insane. Like, these folks, they have so much hubris. 
They can tweet out the locations of their colleagues and not feel as if there's going to be any accountability. No legal repercussions, uh, nothing. It, it's shocking. The gall on these folks. And, and still to think about, like, these extremists who were in the Capitol, like, they were posing for photos with big smiles on their faces. They literally thought that they would get away scot-free. And, and it's shocking. Like, I mean, it's... It's pleasing to see some of them get arrested because I thought that they would get away scot-free, but you just, you see it in their faces. They, they never thought that they would be held accountable because they're entitled. This is our country. How dare it be taken away from us and taken away from Donald Trump, even though he lost by millions of votes, I'm choosing to believe otherwise. Now, getting back to AOC, um, she says that many members of the house were nearly assassinated and that's not an exaggeration. Think about this. Like, this really could have gone a lot worse than it did. I mean, it's tragic that five people died, but this could have gone a lot worse. This could have been really bad. I mean, we know that pipe bombs were found. IEDs were found. An individual had Molotov cocktails. A dude showed up with zip ties, presumably to take hostages. This is... I mean, it's a tragedy, but... It could have been a lot worse, and that's what this video tells me. Also, she says, I thought I was going to die, and um, to have that thought, like when you're so young, AOC is like a couple years younger than me. To have that thought when you're just like starting out, just doing something where you feel as if you're going to make a difference, like this is going to stay with her for the rest of her life, you know, th this sort of trauma, and it's just, it's crazy. It's crazy to me. Um that folks, even on the left, are downplaying this. She said before, before she did this live stream on Instagram, that she did thought, you know, she, she was going to die. She feared for her life. And, like, there's so many folks that are, like, downplaying it. Like, oh, she's just being melodramatic. I mean, when you have armed thugs staging a coup d'etat in our nation's capital, and one of the most, like, visible members of Congress, who the president, who they support, demonizes all the time tells you that they feared for their life. Why is that something that's, like, questionable? Of course she feared for her life because she was a target. She's been a target of Donald Trump. So, you know, th this shouldn't happen in a civilized society. I know that folks oftentimes get frustrated because our government just, it doesn't seem to work, and it doesn't work. It, it seems as if we operate at the capacity that you'd expect a, state, a failed state to operate at. But trust me, you don't want violence. You don't want political conditions where politicians are getting killed by political opponents. Because that certainly is not going to move any of us closer to our goals. You don't want this. The more I think about this, the more horrified I am. Because it could have been so much worse. And I'm just glad that folks like AOC... And everyone made it out okay. You know, everyone. Like, I don't want violence to be done, you know, in the name of, of Donald Trump or, or anything. Like, I don't think that violence is a way to achieve political means. I unequivocally condemn violence. Basically, like, I consider myself to be a pacifist. Not an absolute pacifist, but I really loathe violence because I think that human sentience is a really unique thing. Uh, and we have to respect human life and all life. And, and to see violence, it's not something that I want. I don't think it's going to get us closer to our political goals. So I hope that folks really, like, look at this and learn from this. Because this really is a turning point, you know, in, in our nation's history.